So, um, we're putting together the 2021 Summer Edition of Dave Campbell's Texas Football, hence the bats under my eyes. And we, and, and so the, the magazine is in a lot of ways, for a lot of people, it's a book of predictions, right? It's a book of projections of what we think that the next football season is going to look like. And I think everybody, you know, wants to see how it's going to, what we think of their district, what we think with their region, what we think of, of the state. Yeah, it's a and preview like magazine. It's the high school magazine. It's a preview <laughs> magazine, right? You know, it's, it's what it it's is. what we do. Preview in the magazine. Preview in the season. Not the magazine. <laughs> and so, um, I think a lot of people want to want to see what we think, who we think is going to win the state championship, right? The the state rankings are always a big deal when it comes to Texas high school football. And we do the state rankings for the Associated Press. You know, look, we've got a little bit of gravitas, and so I kind of started thinking about w- how to predict a Texas high school football state champion. Mm-hmm. And I think in a lot of ways, what you've got to do, the best way to go about this is to reverse engineer it, okay? okay. Is to take who won the state championships this mm-hmm. year. And we'll, ju- we'll focus on the 11-man, on the 10-11-man uh, state champions in, in, in Texas football in 2020. Mm-hmm. And then look at what we saw going into the year, what they had going into the year, okay. and figure out what these teams have in common. Right. What what are the common denominators between these teams? What are the things that that apparently set you up? Right. What does a t- How, what gets you from point A to point B? What does an eventual state champion look like in the preseason? Okay. Right. That's how you predict, in my opinion, a Texas high school football state champion. I would agree with that. So I looked over the numbers. I went back to our pre our preseason rankings and and dug through the the questionnaires and stuff for the initial. Um, for, for the 2020 magazine and looked at the 10 champions that we had. And I'm going to warn you right now. Okay. This is going to stun you guys. But nine of the 10 tend to play along, and then there's Jim Ned. <laughs> Jim Ned <laughs> is the fly in the <laughs> ointment. Yeah. Jim Ned is the – And they, they know that come? too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jim Ned is the where did you come from team. Uh-huh. And you're like, how did you, how did you get here? So – I'm going to say a lot of things that are like nine out of the 10 teams or like eight out of the 10 teams. Mm-hmm. And you can kind of assume that who the, the one, <laughs> yeah. who the one is. Okay. So let's take a look at this. So, so, and there were some things that I don't think are a surprise. And then I think there are some te- things that, that, that were a surprise. So nine of the 10 teams that won a state championship in 2020 won at least 10 games a year before. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you almost certainly have to have been good the year before. And in fact, eight of the 10 teams won 12 games or more. Okay. Okay, so we're talking teams that have been good recently. Mm-hmm. No, very few teams come out of nowhere. Right. Okay, and and to, to, to wit, nine of the 10 teams finished in their top 10 of the year before. According to our computer rankings, finished in the top 10. And eight of the top 10, eight of them, finish in the top five, and seven of them finish in the top three. So when you're talking about what's the first step towards predicting a Texas high school football state champion, the first thing is you got to have been good recently. Okay? Sense, yeah. You, know, like, you got to have been good recently uh, in, order to, uh, in order to do that. In fact, I'll, I'll go a little bit deeper. Seven of the ten state champions had won ten games or more in each of the last five seasons. Okay, so we're seeing a brewing almost all the way up through senior. It's got to be classes, a half decade, basically. You know yeah. what I mean? And if you if you say, and then all of them, I'll say this: all of them had had a winning season their past three years. Okay. So, if you want to project out for twenty twenty one, go back to two thousand and seventeen and eliminate every team that didn't have a winning record. Right. Okay. Every team that had a losing record you can probably eliminate, okay, from winning a state championship in mm-hmm. 2021, okay? So let's get to personnel. So I think that that, 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 that I think that, that tracks. I think we think, yeah, you had to have been good recently in right. order to be good in 2021. And a lot of coaches will tell you, too, yeah. they'll notice a class even in, like, the, the eighth grade year and say, you know, by the time they get to seniors, here we go. So here's another thing, and I'm glad you brought that up, youngsters. Thank you. Because I looked at the JV records mm-hmm. for these teams, Okay. Eight of the ten state champions 
had, in my opinion, a what you would call a great JV. Mm-hmm. They either went ten and zero or nine and one or nine and zero, something like that. Mm-hmm. Had a great JV. Another one had a good JV. It was a six and three JV. That was Shiner. Shiner is six and three JV. Okay. And then another one had a fair JV, an okay JV. That was Winthors. Winthors JV went five and five the year before. Uh, Winthors is probably a little bit of an outlier. In this They're a too. little bit of an outlier, but but they were also pretty good. Remember, they started the year fifth in, right. in our rankings. Yeah. We thought they were going to be pretty good. We I get it. The looming gonna... gloom of Mark That's really exactly. kind of puts them That's in exactly. that. <laughs> um, here's one thing I thought was interesting. I think we think about defense winning championships. Right. And I think that that holds true. Mm-hmm. Nine of the ten state champions returned at least five starters on defense. Okay. Okay. Only six of the ten returned five or more starters on offense. Okay? So it's more important to have An defense experience, experience defense, yeah. than offensive experience. Five, uh, Half of them had both, uh, five, uh, at least five on, on both sides, and all had at least one. So if you are a team coming into the year mm-hmm. that has four starters back on offense and four starters back on defense, the odds are against you, the, the data would say. That at least recently, the odds are against you. Mm-hmm. You got to have at least five starters on at least one side of the ball to have a chance at a state championship. Here's what I think. Okay, I will say this: every team that won a t- championship made the playoffs the year before, okay. so you can probably eliminate all the teams that didn't make the playoffs. Right. Um, and nine of the ten won at least two playoff games. Okay. Okay. So you got to at least which kind of goes into into you know they were good last year basically. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. There's a couple of uh, other, one thing. Here's one thing that I think you can completely throw out the window. Okay, what I've realized about this: we ask coaches in the questionnaire, "Do you think you're going to be better, or worse, or the same?" Mm-hmm. You can probably disregard that. Okay, okay. Four of the teams, four of the coaches said they would be weaker. Mm-hmm. Three of them said they'd be better, and three of them said they'd be the same. So, the major, more, you know, a plurality of coaches mm-hmm. said that their team would be worse this year. Than they were than they were the year before, and they went on one state championship. Yeah, so that baggers. doesn't. I don't think that necessarily <laughs> tracks. But then there's one other personnel thing that I think is interesting. Half the teams replaced their starting quarterback. Ooh, okay. Now that's interesting. Half the teams replaced their starting quarterback. Another four of them mm-hmm. replaced their leading rusher. Mm-hmm. So. From an offensive personnel perspective, I think we look at uh, teams that have uh, a, a returning quarterback and be like, you know, I think we take a look at a team like uh, uh, like Westlake. Let's take a team like Austin Westlake, right. okay? And we say, man, they've got uh, Kate Klubnick coming back. They're going to be pretty darn good. Yeah. Well, Kate Klubnick, let's remember, was not the starter in 2019 when they won the state championship. No. You know what I mean? I mean, he was playing receiver. Um, and now he had, they had cycled him through and played a little bit of quarterback, but yeah. he was not the star. He was not <laughs> their. Lead- that was during the three quarterback system. He that was, was not their leading passer. <laughs> no, okay? he was not. He was not their leading passer. And so I think, but now we look at them in 2020, and I think our 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 lizard brain going mm-hmm. to 2021 goes, oh well, they have that returning starting quarterback. That's going to be the difference. Right. I think the data shows that you are that it helps. I don't think anybody's going to turn down a returning starting quarterback. Mm-hmm. But I don't think it's as indicative and as predictive as we think it is. And right. so if I were to sum it up, kind of looking over what these things have in common. First and foremost, you had to have been good recently. Yes. Okay? You had that to have been good out. not just last year, but the last couple of years, uh, you had to have been good. Mm-hmm. This is You don't come out of nowhere. You don't go 1-9 and nine to a state championship. You mm-hmm. just don't. Okay? I think it behooves you to have – a good amount of sec of of defense. defensive experience, mm-hmm. a good amount of guys coming back on the defense, and finally, I think that the other thing that you saw is that you've got to have some playoff experience. Yeah, you got to have some playoff experience, and most of the time, you've got to have some youngsters mm-hmm. from a quality JV that is used to winning that you're ready to infuse um, some uh, you know some right. some some young talent into the program. So. Kind of looking at it, I thought this was particularly interesting, especially like the quarterback thing struck me as interesting. Mm-hmm. The fact that coaches are going to sandbag you yeah. <laughs> and tell you that they're not, <laughs> that they're not going to be as good. Um, I thought that was interesting, and and I also just thought that like we probably overrate offensive 
returning mm-hmm. starters. We probably just do. Um, yeah. I would say that it is probably a lot more likely that if you have continuity on the offensive line, you're going to be better than if you have a starting quarterback returning. Mm-hmm. I think, or at least that is probably something that is more predictive of you having winning. Well, and I think that that goes so far in to the weeds with coaches wanting that deep playoff experience mm-hmm. is because people get overhyped. So if you have an offensive line or a defense that's really good and can hold it down, that gives those younger if if they have if the quarterbacks haven't experienced that or the running yeah. backs haven't, it gives them more time to chill out before they go out there, you know, and yeah. and that you can't get it back after that point. So there you go. That's my breakdown. That's how to predict the Texas high school football state champion. So just go do it. Yeah, just, you don't need us. You know, just be good. Please fire my magazine. Texas football.com. <laughs> but yeah, there you go. That's how to predict the Texas high school football state champion.